And I'll show you one more scan. Let's go through the high scan. Daily volume surge is what it is. And as you can see here, um, basically what I'm looking for is I'm looking for charts that, that close near the low of the day and are also are in long-term downtrend topping patterns. So as you can see on a weekly, um, this one does not count. SAZN is not below the 200-day moving average, cannot count. This one is right there, ADTN, but I don't like how it's gone from red bop to yellow bop to show its strength. So even though ADTN might be a great... Um, you know, losing stock. The fact is, is that it's already off. Let me see from its high there. 32 at one point. 43 percent off its high from the 10.15 to 3 a uh, 2008 mark. So it's not like it's a fresh breakdown or anything like that. Then you have C and W, which is breaking down. Nasty, nasty. Look at this. It's nasty V-ish patterns all over. I can't believe none of them led to a breakdown. But that was because transportation was working. But now with the slowing economy, you can see the volume bot bar is starting to really build up here. And you can see that um, it looks like it might be bad news for the stock now that it's below the 50 and 200 day moving average. CVS, uh, I believe they're the ones that bought longs, drugs, or whatever. Um, as you can see, it doesn't look like it was a very smart move. Um, nice computers. Uh, it'd be nice to go short if it had a didn't have a little bit of tail and it had more of a red bop finish. Then I might consider going short. Um, nice. LSTR is another transportation stock that looks like it's no longer a leader. It has dipped through the 15 200 day moving average, and a death cross seems to be right around the corner. So here's another trucking company that just keeps going out of business. CXW um, Corrections Facility. I thought I would never see, see this actually after um, I was um, long the stock. I can't remember the exact date, but I'm just going to pick two random points that I know that I was long. And from 2006 to 2007, I made an 84% gain on this stock. I know I made more than that because I know I made at least 90% because I know that the buy I made was like right here. And the, the so it had to be like right there. And this sell I made was on the second short, the notice of the second short. So it was an 84% gain is probably what I got on my one of my largest scales um, scanning out obviously I sell a lot of things I go out. PX is a stock I'm currently uh, short that's doing very fine for me um, General Dynamics is a, is a stock that's very ugly doing great for the shorts of that company if that one doesn't go up the United States you know doesn't look that strong so it's not good that it's going down SFD uh, Smithereens food Smitherfields food I guess you couldn't charge an arm and a leg for food for that long it has to eventually bite you in the ass and that's what it looks like here, but it's down too much. And it's got a positive ending for me to want to um, go short at SPW. Um, no way. It's about ready to have a death cross, but unless it would rally all the way back up to the death cross, I wouldn't want to short this stock. Um, WCN Waste Management Waste Connections is the exact, exact, exact opposite of its brother, I believe, WCN that we saw today on the... Uh, right? WCN Waste, yeah. Oh, no, they're both. Uh, oh, that is WCN. Never mind. WCB. Okay, I, I got something confused here. Because there, there is a waste management construction that company that is looking, doing, that, that is doing very well. So this is, they're not all looking like this. EWBC, this ETF, ugly. BPO, too far away. And if you think, well, hey, maybe it's close to 200, 200 day, 250 day moving average. They'd be right if we were going all the way back to 1990. You know, but we're not. We're trying to look at a more short-term run like Google had, like like First Solar had, and like Garmin had. Like Garmin, I think, is the most perfect example because you can see its race here from the top to the bottom. And as you're about to see, that's what Apple is going to eventually do. And Baidu will do it. They all bite the dust. Don't forget, or you know, Oracle did it. And if Oracle was supposed to be the invincible stock, what what happened there, you know? And then the same was with the other invincible stock, like Juniper. I mean, that had that's not even close to its old highs. Or how about Cisco, a stock that you hold forever? They said 
for big winners. None of that turned out right, so that just proves that you just don't buy any old stock just because it's popular. If it's popular, it's a bad stock to own. It's an ETF I have no interest in. BPO looks gross, but too bad. FMX has still got support above the 200-day moving average. TEF is a short that I wanted for a long time, but I never, ever got because I never, ever did get volume with any of these. Volume here was low. Volume here was low. Right here would have been the perfect moment for me to have gone short right here and I would have gained a 16% gain because I started to watch this as a short from around here and as you can see it's a $96 stock and yeah that, that had to be is that I think like it was more expensive than that but whatever it was a $100 stock I thought but, uh, but that's just being nitpicky here I guess so what am I doing yeah, it was a $100 stock. Yeah, so now it's 72 so it's falling off its edge. SVR is topping. IHS, that's a death cross top. And I, I want you all to remember that we're not um, subscribers to my website. I was long IHS on this gap higher all the way to here. Not 257% gain. Now you're saying, well, how did you hold that long? Look at this stock trend above the 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average the entire way. Right here, why didn't I sell it all? Because because I was already up a lot and it bounced right off the 200-day moving average. It did that again. That makes it twice. That's that's really good. It did it again for the third for the third time and it held. That was really good. And then only a month later, it decided to drop back into its base. That was my warning sign to get out of town. You can look at my records online. <clears throat> my full sell record is there for the date of nine. Well, well, I, I want to make sure I get it properly right. Yeah, so that should be it. Yeah, go back to six three. Yeah, so go back to 6.3 and you'll see that from 6, uh, 5.30 to 6.03, uh, I think is when I started to get a little crazy about um, this stock. Like, must be a death cross short coming up soon. And um, <clears throat> IHS came back on me and that was really weird. But the same thing is, is that it's dying now again, proving that charts do work. It might not work perfectly in a lot of them, but as you can see here, look at what happened. By not getting out there and then holding and holding your cocky stock, thinking that you're one of the best, that you picked up a good stock and you're holding a good stock. Oops, you lost 18% in one day. Not good, my friend. Not good at all. This is Joshua Hayes at BigWaveTrading.com. I hope you've learned a ton. Aloha.